Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. How are you? We do fiber arts, knitting vlogs, yarn corners, hauls, just anything related to knitting or fiber arts. And today we are doing a yarn corner. This is my first video back after my trip to Europe and that's essentially what this entire uh, yarn corner is going to be. It's just me talking about all the yarns that I bought in Europe. I think this video is just like a really nice <laughs> like summary of what I did in May and then I get to show you a bunch of yarn that I got. It was insane the trip to Europe. I honestly can't believe I even did it. I even planned it and it even worked out. Like I just remember being maybe like a year ago on this channel just being like I wish I could go to Europe. Like it's like like my dream. I was like I'm gonna do it. Like I gotta do it. And then we actually did it and like just to I've, I've gotten like so many messages from people being like oh my gosh like I can't believe like you were able to make like this thing come true and like you did it and like it's it's just really like um, mind bottling that any of this even happened and that I was able to do this trip and I thank you guys so much for supporting me through it all and I hope that you enjoy this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful video. I don't know how long this video is going to be but it's going to be amazing because I bought so much yarn and um, I, I have to show you all and I think it's really nice to put it in one video and then maybe later um, down the line I want to make kind of like Europe vlogs, kind of talking a bit more about the stores and what I saw there and kind of giving you more of an itinerary. So um, so if you guys were planning to go to any of these countries, you can and I can make that part of the um, Yarn Around the World series. Thank you so much Ritual for sponsoring this video. Ritual is a clinically backed multivitamin. It is formulated with key high quality nutrients that fill common dietary gaps. It is vegan friendly, non-GMO project verified. It is gluten free, major allergen free, and doesn't contain any extra or additive colorants. It is designed to support foundational health, so it has key ingredients for bone health, brain health, blood building, as well as antioxidants oxidant support. I, I try my best to have a balanced diet, but I feel like no matter how balanced the diet is, it's, it's always really hard to get enough nutrients you need, especially I've been using their Essential Women's 18 Plus, so it's just really nice, and they deliver it to your door. If you're not happy with Ritual, they give you a full refund after 30 days, no question asked. Ritual is just made traceable so you know exactly where your ingredients come from and why they're there. Because you're taking these pills every day, you can have confidence in the multivitamin. Yeah, and so it is designed to be dissolved in your small intestine, which is the most ideal place to absorb, and so you you actually don't even have to uh, take it with food. So you can take it with or without food. Yeah, so I actually have a code. It is TLU20. You can get 20% off your first month. Definitely go check it out. Today I'm wearing my Sunday tee. This is knitted with knitting for olive, the cotton merino in the like the white color. Um, I just thought to wear it because it's getting hot here in Vancouver and I wanted to look proper and wear things because I've been a little bit jet lagged and like kind of getting into the swing of things has been really hard. Hopefully I can organize this video based off of the places that I went to, the stores that I went to, and then what I bought in those stores and we'll just mostly focus on the yarn that we got because they need to be shown and I need to like, I don't know, like brainstorm with you guys what I'm gonna make with these things because for some reason my priority was kind of to get things like in small quantities at as many stores as I could as possible um, just to kind of, I don't know, get a taste of Europe yarn um, just because I know like if I were to have gotten sweater quantities of things it's like gonna take up my entire bag like if I wanted like a um, like a DK weight, I would have had to buy like 10 of them and that already would have taken up the whole thing. So I was really trying to be like kind of smart and strategic with the amounts that I was getting and, you know, being able to pack everything in my bag. Um, I, I kind of had like a medium uh, size checked in bag and I bought all of these. It's like, they're space savers, so they're vacuum seal bags. So many people on my streams were telling me to go get those. So you just like bring those with you and like it has like a portable like hand pump and it gives you so much room. Like I honestly, I could have used a third one. I only used two, but I could have used a third one um, because there was just so much space left in my luggage. Um, I just was kind of wanting to stick within the limit. I didn't want to overspend. Yeah, so we tried our best, but it was hard. It was hard like keeping my hands from getting all of the yarns. But I kept telling myself, I was like, Tiffany, like this is probably like one of the few times you're ever gonna be in Europe. Like go and like treat yourself to like a yarn that, you know, is just like not available here in Vancouver. It's like really hard to get if I, unless I make like a huge purchase. So just, just do it. 
let your dreams come true and we'll just worry about the consequences later. And the consequences later are, I don't wanna buy any more yarn. I really need to stick to a yarn band until the end of the year. If you guys ever see me buy any more yarn um, in any of the yarn corners, please just like slap my wrists or something because it is not good. I can't, I can't do this to myself anymore. We need to stop buying and like just accumulating because I think I'm buying more than I'm knitting. So hopefully, um, people were talking on the stream about like net zero or like net positive or negatives. I definitely need to be in a net negative every month kind of thing. So that people were just saying like the amount of yarn that you buy per month has to be negative or you have to use up the same amount of yarn or more so that you're at a net neutral or a net negative. And I think that's a wonderful idea. So I would like to just be in the negative. I want to buy zero yarns and just keep using them all up. First place we went to was London. I loved London. London was so nice. Um, I get why people were saying it was like the weather can be kind of iffy because we had like this rain pour of like 20 minutes. The yarn stores were really easy to get to, like the train system and the bus system were so easy. So I was able to get to them and I got to like so many. I don't know why I thought I was only ever, like I, I literally thought I wasn't going to make it to like any yarn stores, but I had so much time to go and just like visit them. So the first one I went to was Lou. Loop. Loop was like honestly the cutest. I would have liked to have bought the whole store because it's just like a cute little boutique. I was kind of looking around um, and I saw this most beautiful yarn. I don't even know. I've never heard of this brand before in my entire life, um, but it's called Yarn... Yarna... I can't even read it. Yarnadelic. I got it in the color The Beautiful Ones. It is in a sport weight... So I don't know, it's, I don't, I wish I knew how to explain it, but it's not just one color. It's kind of giving me whimsical, like a light mauve with like hints of like yellow and like lilac, but ever so slightly. Um, I thought it was so beautiful. It's 100% Falk, Falklands Cordell. So it's just like a really nice yarn. Like it comes up kind of beigey when you look at it from here, but I would say it gives me more of like pink tones to it. So I just thought it was really beautiful. And then, oh my gosh, there was this wall of Gepard yarn. And you guys know, I feel like I've been eyeing Gepard, uh, Kid Seta, and the other one. I don't remember the name, but it's the fingering yarn. You know? So I was like, you know what, Tiffany, let me just like treat myself to like a little bit. So we got two uh, Kid Setas. This one is in the color 103. No idea what that color is. But again, it's kind of like a beige, but it's like a hint of like a peach. Like, so I wouldn't say it's a pure beige. It's like kind of pinky. Um, but it's 70% Super Kid Mohair, 30% Silk. And um, you girls just thought it would match perfectly. I thought I could make like a scarf or something, but I'm not too sure what I want to make with this yet. It is um, 333 millimeters per 100. Um, my dudes so I was thinking like I could use one and a half of this make something like I don't know what can I make with 300 millimeters I don't know I was thinking I could make kind of I think my thought process was to make the it's like uh the hoja the hoya scarf by Lynette but I don't know I'm on the fence maybe like the balaclava the November balaclava I could make a really nice one but I think like a really nice scarf would be really nice so um that needs to happen for me and um i need to get it going so this was like the beginning of the struggle i was like okay this is like a little treat i'm okay with like buying this amount in every store or less and so we'll see how we did as we go along the stores so next up we went to i think it was beautiful knitters oh my gosh already the struggle already began I don't even know how we survived the end of the trip so someone told me beautiful knitters uh had cis lyricate and that already end of life was done kind of going into the trip I was like okay we're gonna go for yarns that we can't really get so I was really eyeing some like is your yarn like is yours weirdly a lot cheaper in Europe like the conversion rate um it's just a bit cheaper and then I really wanted to find some Phil Kalana so again Phil Kalana is really hard to get here um so I just was looking for different bases um things that I normally maybe wouldn't 
pick up immediately like in an online cart um, and get it kind of in Europe and then yeah I was looking for some Gepard I was like if I see a Sisler get oof maybe and so uh yeah Beautiful Knitters has like this huge wall of Hanks and um I don't know what got me but I was like okay let's get some Sisler get and I was crying because there were so many different um, colors, like signature colors that I feel like she has. So I just was like, I don't know, like what base, what like color, what should I get? So the first one I did get, oh my gosh, like stop. Like look at her, look at the beautifulness. This is the type of quality I need to implement in my yarns. Like this is just like on a whole nother level. Um, but this is a Merino Single. This is in the color Tiramisu, so I don't know. I just wanted something that was like not in your face, very basic for a merino single. It's got like nice speckles, just very, um, just neutral. We wanted something very simple. If I was only gonna buy one, you know, it had to be like a really good, like solid piece that I could use. Um, it's 100% merino superwash. It contains 366 meters. I I understand the hype. I get it. Like just just like treating yourself to one is just so sweet. She is so expensive. Like every time I bought one, it was like $50 and I was like, "Oh, just stab me right in the heart." But again, I kind of just justified it like I can buy one skein, one skein, I can stretch it out and just make something really beautiful um and really cherish her and um and, and I, you know, like, when am I ever going to get the chance to get this again uh, unless I'm in Europe or I spend, like, a crazy amount on shipping to get it at her website? I, like, literally spent, like, 20, I spent, like, 40 minutes, I swear, at every single yarn store I was in. Um, but I was asking my friend, I was like, what should I do? Like, because they had the mohair. So they had the merino singles and the mohair in the store. And um, I was like, what should I do? Should I get, like, the same color so I can do it at the same time and, like, have it, oh, just, like, a really wonderful gorgeous or should I get two so uh, I think in my mindset I was like okay I can justify buying two Sisler gets different color getting a merino single getting a mohair and I can use them in two separate projects maybe even more uh, because it is quite a lot of yarn like if you do get Hanks like 100 grams like this is you're essentially getting like two skeins so you can do quite a bit with it and I was trying to justify it. Um, but yeah, so I got a silk mohair. This is in the color Magnolia. I was really eyeing, I don't know the name of it, but it's like a blue kind of like speckly one. But I was like, you know what? Lilac, she's cute. She's, she's again, I don't know. I was really not wanting to buy stuff on a whim, but buying it because I knew that I could wear it in the future. So yes, this is the mohair. It is just a beautiful... I don't know lilac it's got some like really warm but dark browns and just nice speckles but like lights like this is literally a section of just like pure white so I think she's gonna be gorgeous like imagine I just keep imagining myself like putting this with a just a merino uh like white base and it just making like elevating it somehow but the question is again I have no idea what the bejesus I'm gonna put with these um but I feel like this again with a white mohair this with like a white base would look really nice um and I can make I can have more with the little that I got this guy I feel like would be either like a really good slip over I don't know maybe like a nice little crop top thing again this guy as well accessory kind of like a hat something set I don't know I can't decide but they're probably just gonna like stay as Hanks for a really long time just so I can admire them and just love them so this is what I got at the beautiful knitters and the lady was so nice uh I got a free tote bag uh because they give out tote bags with every purchase and I was like thank goodness I bought something <laughs> um but yeah I love this guy to death so we were already starting out strong starting out too strong I got a little worried. I was able to make one last ditch effort to go to Wild and Wooly. It's kind of like a little far off, so I did have to take a transit that was a very long time. But the store was really cute. I really liked it. They had the reason why I got myself to go, because I was kind of like on the fence, it's because it had a lot of, uh, what's it called? Rosa Pomar. Pomar? 
Pomar. And I did end up buying a Mondim in Kelowna and I have not made anything with it because I just think it's so beautiful. I hate it buying yarn and just loving the skein or hank way too much to want to use it um but yeah it had they had so much of it and i was like you know what like again when am i gonna ever find any of these like us so i was like okay we're gonna try something odd we're gonna look for something different so there were two skeins that really caught my eye uh the first one is mungo okay so mungo is no, this is in English. 50% wool, 50% cotton. This is from Portugal. So your girl has to go to Portugal, I guess. Um, but I bought two skeins of it. It is just like this really, I don't know, tweedy kind of gray. And you know I'm in the grays, um, my grays era. But it, I just thought it was so interesting and so cool, just so different. Um, and I thought, I don't know, I was thinking I could make like a nice top with this, um, because I've, I mean, coming back from Europe, I came back and I was looking at all my clothes and I was like, none of these are like my style anymore. So I just like got rid of like a bunch of things. So I definitely need to make more and this needs to be on the wardrobe. I think like a cute tank top or something would be nice. Maybe I could do like a, another June top. I've been thinking about doing another June top in like a basic color, but maybe it's like a little bit too much. I don't know. I just made the Alice top too, which uh, hopefully I'll show in another video. It, there's just, just no time. There's no time in this video to talk about like literally anything else. But um, yeah, if there's any like nice tank tops that you guys know of, please let me know. I was also thinking, because this comes with 220 meters and I bought two. So yeah, again, I guess just a tank top. I would have loved to buy four and I would have totally made like the peacock tee or something. But again, it's just, it was quite a bit. I don't know how much these were, but um, they're like really big. So right off the bat, I was like, okay, I already made like two big purchases in London. Like if I need to buy a third one, there really is not gonna be any more room. Um, and then, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Tiffany, we need to stop. But uh, I bought some Pegule Haul. Um, it's just, I love the packaging. I don't know why, it's so flipping cute. Like the little designs that they have on each of the um, labels. So this is in the color 10. Oh my gosh, sorry. This is in the color nine. I, they don't have names to them, so I have no idea what it means. But this is color 10. And so I saw this green and like instantly like, wanted to grab her from the shelf um and i don't know why i just thought like maybe one would be <laughs> enough to do something it's 220 meters it's 100 percent wool um it's just so interesting the color uh variation it's green there's some blues it's just so textured and like so i don't know there's just so much I was gonna say flavor, so much color, color to it. And the lady said that they dye the roving first and then they spin it. So that's why it kind of gives it kind of that's all that variation and loveliness. Um, she's a little rough, but I don't know. I just feel like I had some leftover green mohair from drops uh, from using for my mohair um, vest, my mohair slipover. So I feel like I could do something with that and it would look very, very nice. And you know I'm into the green and I think green is into me as well. So, I mean, come on, what am I gonna do? Paris, okay. Paris, what did we do? The damage. Okay, we went to two stores in Paris. I ended up going to Little Weasel and Une, 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 Une Mal. At Londrand. I don't know. I'll give all of the names or put them up here or something because it's just impossible to say or pronounce any French. Um, but it was so funny because I went, waited, and there was a sign on the store and it was like, I'll be back. So I waited outside the store until the lady uh, came in and uh, allowed me to shop in there. So, um, funny enough. Uh, 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 yeah, so in my, in, in mail or whatever, um, cute little store. It had, again, just this one yarn that I really wanted. And like, I, like, I don't know, my eyes just like laser towards it. And I, I touched it and I immediately needed it. But the question was like, how many do we buy? And the answer was always, should I buy one? Should I buy two? 
should we struggle i don't know but this guy's so humongous so i ended up buying lang cloud you guys i did one instagram story or maybe two where i was like where can i get this yarn this yarn is not available in america where can i buy it and so i like my jaw dropped seeing it in there i was like do i do i have to buy every single one of these stop um so we were like crying a little bit i I looked on Witter Design to see what the Dave sweater was and she used eight. I was not buying eight. So I was like, okay, what can we justify in the <laughs> the luggage? I ended up only getting one, but holy mother trucking, goodness gracious. Look at all these gorgeous colors. Like it's never ending. It's so colorful. It's so cool. I have no idea what you're gonna make with this, Tiffany, but it is 90% virgin wool, 10% nylon. It is so... Just like, I love how like in the stream yesterday, I was like, yeah, like I'm looking for like basic capsule wardrobe, just like being so classic and elegant. But here I am buying the most colorful thing you've ever seen. I feel like I need <laughs> like a balance of just like colorful and then basic. Just, I don't know how we're gonna me like meld those two together. This guy, I don't know, you, I just, you just have to get it. I don't know, it's so expensive. I don't even know how much I spent on this. It was like 30 bucks or something could not justify eight. Uh, this guy is 260 meters, is 100 grams. So I don't know. I was thinking maybe I could hold it with something, like hold it with a mohair, but then there's so many different colors. I need to find more inspiration for it um, because I want to make something beautiful with this. I think it would be really nice to make something big and kind of stretch this piece beyond um, its ability because again, just like the pink, the greens, the blues, the, oh my gosh, everything about this yarn is everything and I need to make like a swatch or something because it's so fluffy and huge and just wonderful. Like this guy had to go inside the vacuum seal immediately because it just like, it's just too much air, too much air in between these guys. Um, but yeah, I low key kind of had my eye on some Lang as well. I don't know why, what happened, but like there's so much Lang in Europe. So I was like, oh shit, like maybe, you know, maybe we should get on that because there's no Lang here. So the next thing I got was Lang Mill Colory Baby. Okay, so this, I was initially, I think I read the label and I recognized the label because I had once seen Lark Bayer use this yarn in an Instagram story and she, like, it was like in the background and I had taken a photo of it and she used it for something and I should have taken a photo, like I should, I don't know where that photo is, but I just remember her using it and loving how it looked. So I was like, okay, I guess this one's it. And it looks so flipping beautiful. I wanna cry my absolute eyes out someone tell me to stop buying all these rainbow ass like colors but it's just so beautiful I don't know like I like that there's like an in-between of gray and then all these colors I don't know how we're gonna implement this into a anything but I think just maybe even if I'm gonna make like a Lark Bayer uh, piece in the future I could honestly just use one strand of this with um, some basic thing and it would give me the same effect that she has for all of her pieces in it look really, really flipping cool. So this is color 845.0151. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, it is Merino Fine, super wash, 100% virgin wool, Merino Fine, and it is fine. I don't know. You can get me on the pastels. It's a really dangerous, a dangerous game I play with myself. Um, and she is beautiful. After that, I went to Little Weasel. Honestly, Little Weasel is so cute. I really liked it. The area that it's in is so beautiful and it's divided up into two sections in this little hallway. One is more like commercial yarns and the other one is more hand dyed yarns. There was honestly just a shit ton of uh, Philokalana and I was like on a hunt to find the best Philokalana things I could. We did we did some damage, but very light damage. It wasn't like anything at all. Like I swear I only spent like 20 euros and I was shook because if I were to buy these like anywhere else, it would have cost me so much more. So I was able to find some Philokalana Alva. So I have never used Alva before and immediately when I touched it, it was like love at first sight kind of thing. It was like, oh, this is 
this is dangerous. We could buy a lot of you. So this is 100% alpaca. You can kind of see it has a really nice halo to it. It's super soft, kind of like a baby alpaca almost. I think this is a lace. It's in the color 101. Um, it's uh, 175 meters in 25 grams. So she is... She's, yeah, she's like a lace um, and it's really soft. So I bought two of them because I think, I think the Hoya scarf, one of them is knit with Philicola Saga. And so I thought this was quite similar and I was like, okay, I'll just do this instead. So I'll probably use this for that one. And I think it, it'll look a little better on the white versus the cream. Um, but yeah, really excited to try this one out. I have not, again, I haven't tried that much uh, Phil Kalana. I've only really tried their, I have some Tilia and I've only really tried their Arweta and the Saga. So I was like hyped. I was like, I've never seen you in person before. Let me use you and buy you. Uh, so really, uh, again, I'm just going to say I'm excited about everything because I am. And then we got some Mercy or Mercy. I think I've always thought I would use Mercy. I don't know, because you're supposed to use it. It's the suggested yarn for the Sunday tea. So I was like, okay, let me just get something. Um, but I didn't want to buy white because I feel like I always buy white for tank tops. I mean, of course I love white, but I was like thinking to myself, like, let's, let's like change it up like ever so slightly. So we did end up buying this kind of it looks kind of gray here, but I would say it's more of a brown. Uh, it's in the color 612. Again, Phil Colana Merci, 50% superwash merino wool and 50% Pima cotton. There's 200 meters in this. She's a nice fingering weight. I bought two in the hopes that I would make some sort of, again, tank top. I don't think I could make a t-shirt with this, but it would have made more sense to buy four to make a t-shirt, but I, couldn't get myself to buy four of these. I don't know why. I think it was just because like we were so slowly like accumulating like yarns. It was like if I bought four that I'm leaving zero room, like zero room to buy any more yarn. So we got two, probably gonna make a cute little tank top with it. I don't know how I'm gonna style this because I don't know if this is my color. Like I really could not tell. Uh, but they didn't have a lot of color selection, I feel like. So I was just like, we'll do this one and hopefully. Uh, it'll be fine. If I don't like it, I can just easily dye it black or something darker and we'll be super happy about that. Then we went to Leon. Leon was just kind of like a pit stop uh, before we got to Milan. Uh, so I just picked up some just real casual stuff. She had a huge selection of Isayur and I hadn't seen this Isayur yet. So I was like, you know what, Tiffany, let's just do it. Let's just, just like plunge and jump right in because I think this color is sold out as well on the is your website so just thought to do it it's the trio two I've again never tried trio two before um I ended up buying four but I'm not really too sure what I'm gonna do with all of them I was kind of thinking to myself I could use three and make the breeze bag and hold it with something that's a similar color uh but I don't know if that's like a waste do you know what I mean? It's like, why would I have spent like so much money to only use this on like a little bag? But I mean, I guess that bag will be like, you know, I gotta use that bag all the time. So it's like an incentive. Um, but yeah, this is your trio two in the color linen. Um, it's quite harsh, like it's quite rough. Quite, yeah, again, I guess it is a linen. It's 50% linen, 30% cotton, 20% lyocell. Um, so I, I don't know what I was expecting. I think because everyone was using it for like the breeze collection, I was like, oh, it'll be like, like just like a cotton or something. But linen is quite rough, like quite strawy. So like if you're not comfortable with knitting just a silk, it's quite, uh, I don't know, it might be hard on the hands. Um, so yeah, not too sure what I want to make with it. Initially, I was going to, I wanted to make the, um, seashell set that was in the Breeze collection, uh, but I would have needed way more. I think, she, I think it was like six of these just to make the top. And then I don't even know how many I would need for the skirt. So I was like, scrap that. There's no way. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to do with these four. Um, but they're really nice and I really like them and... 
I wanted to try it out because I did see Trio 1. Trio 1 was like, again, similar to this feeling, but like a lace weight. And I was like, what am I going to do with this lace weight? So I didn't end up getting any uh, Trio 1. I thought Trio 2 would have been a better, I don't know, a better choice um, for things to make with it. And I did see some Whore Organic, um, but it was also quite rough. I, I like, I'm really happy that I was able to touch them in person to see how they felt uh, in order to kind of see if I wanted to make anything with them. And I probably could, uh, I would just have to mix it with something. So either the Horror Organic or, or the Trail one, I would for sure mix it with something. And this too, I feel like I definitely have to mix it with something. Next places we went, we went to Milan. I didn't find any yarn there. After Milan, we went to Venice and then we went to Vienna. I ended up going to two stores in Vienna. I went to Woolen Wine and then I don't remember the name of the second one because I didn't end up buying any yarn there. I will hopefully put it in the Vienna vlog, but I went to Wool and Wine. It was just like a cute little store kind of really close to where we were. Like everything was like 10 minute walk away or less. So it was kind of just like, okay, like we might as well go. I didn't realize that Wool and Wine was like a specific brand. Like they sold their own yarn. So I was like, oh my gosh, like should I buy something? <laughs> because again, I was like, I'm never going to be here again. Like Let's just try it out and see if it's good. So I ended up getting just two really small things, but mighty, mighty things. Um, so this is the Woolen Wine. I don't, I'm saying it wrong, right? Cause you, they like, they pronounced the W-V, right? So it's like Woolen Vine, Woolen Vine. I'm so sorry for offending everybody. Um, but this is the Merino 200. It is 100% Merino wool, um, 200 meters in 50 grams. And I just, gravitated towards the blue. It's always the blue that get me. It was so dangerous. I just thought it was so pretty. And everyone in Europe just like wears like the most brightest colors. So just anytime I saw something bright, I was like, okay, I'll get it. And it was so pretty. I just thought it was really soft and really nice. And it was really cheap for what, um, I guess what I was seeing. And, um, yeah. I wanted to try it, and if we like wool and vine, wool and vine, we might just have to order online. Unless it doesn't work out, then never mind. But uh, this is just how it looks like. Pretty basic cobalt blue. Um, I don't know what I'm planning on making with this, but I have a lot of cobalt blue, and I do want to make like a lot of things. Like I want to make cobalt socks, cobalt hat, maybe cobalt slipover, cobalt sweater. And then I haven't thought about anything else, but um, I think that would be literally perfect for whatever I had in mind. After Vienna, we went to Prague. Prague was honestly like a spontaneous, I went randomly and I just like looked on Google Maps and I was like, okay, I guess there's a yarn store here. I found Wool Point. Um, I know I posted on my Instagram stories and people were saying that there was another yarn store. Didn't get those messages until later, so I didn't end up having any time to go to them, which was really sad. Um, but Wool Point was so cute. The lady was so sweet to me. She was so nice. I was like the only one in there. I spent like a good 30 minutes in silence, just like walking back and forth, trying to figure out what I wanted. And it was, it was confusing. I was very confused. The selection was cute. A lot of the yarn stores had like very specific brands and very specific bases and <laughs> very specific colors. So like it was really hard to buy anything because it might have not had like the number of skeins that I needed. So it was kind of like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know. I need a project in mind. I don't want to just like kind of buy whatever, but I did end up getting so another Philokalana. I know, don't hate me, but I mean, I need to. We need it to. So this is Pernilla. It's 100% Peruvian uh, Highland wool. It is in the color 978. It's just like a very basic kind of beige. I was into the beige. Like if you see the Mercy, I don't know. I think we were, I was like hating on myself for buying so much gray that I couldn't justify getting gray there. So we were just, just finding different shades of brown, browns that I feel like I don't really see anywhere. This is 175 meters for 50 grams. And I don't know, we just thought it was so flipping cute and it's really cheap for what it is. Like Pernilla, Shibi, we respect you. She's like a nice, um, 
she's a nice price and we uh, appreciated that. Um, I bought three. I kind of was thinking I could make the beginner jacket, like the baby one, because um, it uses Pernilla. Um, but I don't know, like for my future baby, like, do you deserve such nice yarn? I don't know. And should I just like treat myself and like knit something for myself? But I was like, what am I supposed to do with three of these? I don't really know. So I'm on the fence about what I'm gonna make with this, but I do wanna make something cause it feels like a really nice wool. Just, it's like a nice uh, change to kind of like a basic DK or I guess a basic sport weight yarn. Just like, I don't know, I like the feeling of this like a lot. So so we were very happy to pick these up. And then I ended up getting some more Arweta. I saw these, cause I think this was the first time I saw any Arweta and I was like, oh my gosh, please. I had just got the jaw wool last month and I was like, okay, we got a lot of basic colors like Tiffany, let's like do something a little bit different. So I ended up picking up these two, oh my gosh, they're coming up so vibrant. But I initially, this caught my eye, the red. I've just seen a lot of people wear like Mary Jane shoes, like black shoes with like a red sock. And I just thought, that that was the most smartest thing and most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So I wanted to make myself a red sock and it's kind of been on a bucket list of mine. It, I mean, bucket list. It's been on a knitting list of mine to make like a red sock. And then also, I don't know why, but I was like, this blue would also look really good with like a Mary Jane or kind of like a shoe, kind of like accent color. So I don't know, it's not really like a cobalt it's more like a royally blue, more bluey kind of, I don't know, more green in the blue. Oh my gosh, I'm so horrible at describing it. But this is the color 218, and this color is 265. So we kind of just had to do it to them because when in Europe, let's get some Arweta yarn. Because again, I was, t I like, I just kept like, doing the conversions in my phone, like the math, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is so cheap. When am I ever gonna have the chance ever again? So it was kind of like that. And I don't regret, I don't I don't regret any decision I ever made in Europe because I, I have these yarns now and I wouldn't have had the balls to like buy it here in Canada. Isn't that so crazy? After Prague, we went to Berlin. Berlin actually surprised me. There's actually so many yarn stores in Berlin and I was really happy about it because I think like Milan, Prague and Vienna, I felt like there like wasn't as many. So when I went there and I saw it, I was like overwhelmed and happy <laughs> to be um, in the presence of yarn. So the first one I went to was uh, Yarn Over Berlin. Um, I don't know why Berlin is like this, but it is so confusing getting anywhere. Like I got lost, like trying to find any of these yarn stores. So Yarn in Berlin, super nice, had so much issue. I just was swimming in it. I was overwhelmed instantly because I was like, I could buy this entire store. Like, don't, don't test me. Don't test me right now. I need everything. Um, and so I, I don't know how we held back because there was so much yarn. Like there was some Highland. I don't know why I didn't buy any Highland and I didn't buy any Alpaca one, but it was so cheap there. And I was like, oh, should I? And like there was the Japanese uh, bull mold. I don't know what it's called, but it's the one that is used for the French market bag for, from Petit Knit. There was so much of that and it's so cheap there. And I was like, oh. but then I was, I kept telling myself, I was like, I'm not gonna make another French market bag. Like what? Like stop being like delusional right now. So we were delusional in another way. Oh my gosh, Tiffany, I, it was a mistake that I was walking around the whole store and then I just like looked down and I just see this one color and I was like, I've been eyeing this color for a very long time. That is not okay because I went on the website. I've been on like multiple websites that hold Issyur Aaron Tweed and none of them have this color. And I'm like, I don't know, just like knowing that I can't get it almost makes you want it more. So I was like, whoa, I've never been in the presence of even thinking about wanting this. Yeah, if you could guess it, we got some Aaron Tweed confetti. Oh my gosh. So this is her, oh my gosh. You guys know I love my Tweed. I am so into Tweed, Tweed is everything, and I just thought that this Tweed was really cool. I have, again, seen it on the website, it's always sold out, I can never find it. I don't know why Yarn Over Berlin had this, but I bought all the, all of them. I bought all that they had in stock, so I ended up buying three. Um, dangerous, I know, 
but I kind of just justified it like this is the most beautiful yarn I've ever seen in my entire life. I have never tried Erin Tweed before. Um, I love this. I love this and it's so hard to get anywhere. Like Tiffany, like don't miss your opportunity. Seize the moment kind of thing. So yeah, we ended up buying this. Um, again, don't regret, don't regret anything. It's 100% uh, wool. It's uh, 160 meters for 100 grams. So I bought three in the hopes that I can make like a slip over maybe. Like I think a really nice, like if I have enough yarn, like a cable would be really pretty uh, if we can manage. But the lady who sold this to me, she was like, oh yeah, this yarn is really nice. I was like, I know. And she was like, yeah, like it'd be so nice with a mohair. So mm, she has to be with a mohair. She's going to be with a mohair and I think it would be so delicious. Like I love the tweed because it's like, constant it kind of reminds me of noro it gives me like that essence um and it just has like yeah again a lot of colors like red blue green purple pink i love the pink uh you got some indigo some dark green some turquoise some orange just like literally everything and anything in this one yarn and um just oh my gosh like this gray on me I already know it will be so delicious. So we cried, but only of tears of happiness. Okay, next place we went was Wool in Berlin. Um, but I also went to Knit Knit Berlin, didn't end up buying anything there. Uh, thank goodness, because we really, it was getting, it was getting bad because we were almost buying like a couple yarns in every yarn store we went to. So whenever I couldn't find yarn, it was like, a success. <laughs> I went to Ber Wool in Berlin. Uh, the selection is really great there. They had a ton of Sunnisgarn. I was like, you don't need this. But uh, we got sucked right in because I saw a November balaclava that was made with uh, the pure gint Sunnisgarn in like the confetti. I don't know. I don't think it's confetti, but it's like one of their kind of tweed um, guys. And they only had two left. And I asked the lady, I was like, I would like these please very much. Yes, she got them for me. So thank you, lovely lady. So this is Pure Gint 2720. It's just like the cream, cream tweed. I've been seeing it everywhere, all over it's like an Instagram. And it's just like, it's a very subtle tweed. Like it's very little, it reminds me of Regia Tweed, um, very similar, but this is like the cream version of it and it just has like really nice, just little itty bitty speckles and I think like either making like a balaclava or like a hat or something like cute like that would be marvelous on me. And I think I was on like a weird, I was on like a weird like tweed high um, and so we wanted to snatch these up because uh, my supplier has these. So I kind of wanted to snatch these up before and see if I liked it. And if I did, we could put it in the store. And then because for some reason two was not enough, I was like, you know what? Let me try um, because I had bought so many Filicolana. I bought like the Pernilla, we bought the Mercy, we bought some Arweta, I bought the Alva, you know? What's to say let's get just one more. So I got some Peruvian Highland wool. I know Petite Knit uses it quite a bit. And so I was like, let me test it out. Just let me test it out, please. I just ended up buying two in this like, like nice like charcoal color. I'm thinking of making the Stockholm hat with this, but doing it in the way that the weekend hat is done. Do you know what I mean? Like the fold up, just doing that fold up and then doing the top portion. The, I think it's the Stockholm hat or the hipster, no, it's the Stockholm hat. So uh, I think it'd be really gorgeous with this with like a mohair. Let me find some mohair with this and this would be just marvelous. And a really nice basic hat and it'll knit up so fast and so lovely. I, I can already tell that this is going to be uh, a very nice yarn to use. I hope two's enough. It might not be enough. It's a hundred meters in 50 grams. Oh, you better be enough. You might not be enough. Oh no, what am I gonna do? It's fine, it's 100% virgin wool. We'll see, we'll see what we do with this guy and it better be, it better be glorious. So then after I went to Woolen Berlin, I told myself, I was like, I'm not gonna buy any more yarn. Berlin has nothing else to offer me. There is no thing that is going to get me into buying any more yarn, no. Uh, and so we just went to uh, just like, 
I think it was like the Berlin Mall or something, or we were just like walking around and there was like this craft store and we were like, okay, let's just like go in. Um, and I was like, oh, like it's like cute or whatever. Like it has like trinkets, like what are the chances it has yarn? And then I like turn around and there's this whole like section of yarn. And I was like, okay, like she's probably acrylic. Like let's like whatever, I don't even care. Um, but it had a lot of Rico, like Rico yarn. I was like, this is kind of crazy. It just had like a bunch of very nice quality yarns. And I was like, wait, this is kind of confusing. And like some were on sale and I was like, wait, stop, no, I don't need any more. Um, and then I get to like the last corner and it has Regia. Like, don't do this to me, Regia. Um, it's the Shashenmeyer. I'm definitely saying that super inc uh, incorrectly. But I was like, oh shit, I have to get this because it was so cheap. It was like eight euros or something. It costs $20 here like tw I was looking I was comparing because I always use my phone to compare uh, the prices and it was like tw it's 22 ish dollars here and it's like 12 dollars there in Berlin and I was like oh no so I was like sitting there for a good moment thinking to myself what am I gonna get because we have to get something I really didn't again I didn't really want to get more grays I didn't want to get more like whites or like they had a lot of like really basic colors because again, I just have so much at home. It just seemed too much. And so there was this red that I was eyeing and I was like, oh my God, she's beautiful. So this is her. Um, she is, oh my God, look at how red it is. It's so beautiful. Uh, it's in the color 2054, I think is the color. It's hundred grams. It has, um, oh, everything's in German. It has 420 meters in it great fingering weight yarn I was just instantly like yes please let me have you um but again I just bought those red uh, Arweta socks so I was like you know what maybe let's just buy three of them let's just make a sweater <laughs> so I'm I guess I'm making a red sweater which I have no problems about I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to find the perfect red mohair so if you guys know of one let me know. I have been wanting to make a red sweater for a really long time because I think, first off, it would look great on me. I don't know, I just, I feel like every color just looks great on me. I think the red would be nice and I've seen a lot of, I guess, just like people rocking like a red sweater or like a red cardigan and it looks amazing. So I feel like three would be the perfect amount to make like an oversized, beautiful red sweater. I feel like it's bold enough that it's like a statement piece, but it's also, classy enough if I do it in like a very basic stockinette that it is something that I could wear consistently over and over again and it not go out of style. We love her. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we were then officially, officially I was like, okay, we really need a saw. Berlin, stop it right now. And so ended up going from Berlin. We went to Amsterdam, thankfully, uh, but also quite sad. Uh, I, we ended, I, I ended up going yarn shopping on a holiday and the only store that was open was Stefan and Penelope. So I do feel like I did miss out on a bunch of other yarn stores, but I think it was good for me because I just was like, Tiffany, we've already bought so much yarn already. Like let's, it's, I think we got to take a little break here. You just get sucked in every time uh, because yeah, I feel like I was like wanting to just try as many different bases as I could of brands that I just don't have very easy access to. I was able to meet a subscriber there. Maya, thank you so much for like showing me around and hanging out with me. It was like honestly so sweet. It was so funny because like I was never recognized in any store. Like just no one knew me and that I honestly sometimes like that because it's like, oh, I can just like look and just be you know carefree um but two people recognized me in the Steph and, P and Penelope and it was hilarious I had the biggest struggle there because there's just so much yarn in Stefan and Pe Penelope I was like the colors overwhelming the variety overwhelming the amount of bases I mean there's a ton of merino singles and I feel like I have a slight struggle with merino singles because I'm not really too sure what I can make with it so if you guys have good patterns for some merino single stuff please let me know but I feel like I'll just be mixing it with like a mohair uh, just because I, I I don't know I don't trust a merino single I feel like anything could happen because it's only one ply kind of on the fence about getting they have a they have a specific yarn I was like on the fence about getting that there was some uh, it's your Bomelin that was on sale. I was like eyeing that, um, but I didn't like that it it had like a cardboard 
roll so I couldn't have compressed it so I just thought to myself that it would have been too difficult to bring. I fell in love with these Hanks. The Hanks are the dangerous ones. I fell in love with it and I had to give up all the other yarns to buy these two. And, uh, my wallet cried. Just a full long one hour cry after this purchase but um we had to, I don't know, we just had to. Like I'm in Stefan and Penelope, like when am I ever gonna be here ever again? Knowing that like each yarn, like I remembered every single yarn that I bought in every single yarn store in every single location and just like every one of these pieces, whenever I make something with it, it's gonna have a memory associated with it. And I, I just don't know. I love sentimental shit, I guess. We were debating, there were so many more colors. I honestly would have gotten more if I hadn't gone, like if Amsterdam was the first place I went to, I probably would have gotten more. But I ended up buying, this is Walk. Uh, it's a German company. I do have some yarn from them, but I really just liked the speckle of this. It kind of reminded me of the Sislirigate one, but it was, this one's like slightly less blue, more, so much variation like there's more pink lots of like browns just like <laughs> me like literally me in every store i was like looking like so into each of these colors because i wanted to make sure i was gonna like the whole thing because i feel like hanks can be quite a surprise when you get them so this is the cottage merino 100 percent merino wool superwash it is hansel and gretel she's my hansel and gretel um so I just fell in love with the speckle and dangerous, honestly, so dangerous. I loved the color so much. And again, I think just like a base mohair would just look really nice with this. And I don't know what to make with you. I don't know. She could be anything and more. And then I don't know. This one was a wild card. Honestly, the wildest of the cards. I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. Uh, I've never had like a Shang or King or queen I don't know uh fiber so I just thought why not why not do it I was holding this guy for so long um this is hand dyed in London oh my goodness it's in the color time traveler it is 100% superwash ultra fine South African merino uh and it's just so cool this one I thought was really really soft um so it just has a lot of pastel -y colors very pastel. I don't know. I just thought it would be a really cool, I don't know, like, just, I don't know, statement, like, top. I don't know. I love how I'm like, I'm gonna do basic, and then I fall in love with, like, all of these, like, crazy colors. Like, Tiffany, we have to be a little bit more strategic with my yarn buying, but, like, how can I not be so in love with this? I don't know. I just... It's so soft, it's so beautiful, and I feel like the variation is going to be so interesting and so fun to knit up. Uh, we'll see, I just, she's really cute. Maybe I can do, I've also, again, I could use these guys like add in combination with a lot of like the Lark Bayer pieces. Like if you guys saw her book, her second book is coming out. I feel like um, just adding this as like a secondary um, color and like cutting them up and like having it all variegated would be perfect. I just feel like that would be a very good way to use up this yarn, but also enjoy and use like it up to make a, a quite a big piece for it. After Amsterdam, I did end up going to Brussels, but I didn't have any time to go to any yarn stores. I really, I was really sad about it, but just the amount of time that we had was just not enough, and the yarn stores were kind of further out then in like the center of Brussels and we were doing like a day trip um, to like Ghent and Bruges and then like our like there was like UK strikes for the rails and we had to get back to London before our flight so it was like honestly like we, <laughs> we were very stressed that day and so I couldn't meet Bethany and I was really sad about it and um, sad that I didn't get to see any more yarn but also Again, thankful because we were kind of over the limit <laughs> um, that I put on myself to buy yarn and the luggage was getting kind of heavy. So I think all in all, it's totally fine. Um, maybe one day I can go back again. That's the last one. Oh my gosh, I hope this video wasn't too long. Talking about it and reliving the moment of shopping in those stores was really nice. I feel like I'm more inspired to knit um, than I was before and uh, Europe was honestly such an amazing opportunity. I 
honestly like cannot believe that happened to me like being back here I'm like did that really even happen um, but I have all this yarn to prove it <laughs> and um, I can like enjoy them and kind of remember the holiday and kind of reminisce on it for as long as possible so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope it was entertaining. I hope you guys had some inspiration or, or just had a good time with me. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys don't know already, I'm on Instagram, Patreon. Uh, we have a Discord. You can find me on YouTube. We stream YouTube videos and we make YouTube videos. Um, and I'm honestly like so glad to be back and so ready to make more videos and more content for you guys. So um, I hope you guys don't get sick of me. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!